RCDIY. Stay safe and have fun. This video is accompanied by a blog post whose link can be found in the description below. Welcome to another video from rcdiy.ca. OpenTX 2.2 has just been released. Today we're going to take a look at installing the micro SD card in your transmitter, connecting the transmitter and computer, downloading, installing and configuring companion, backing up the transmitter, downloading and writing OpenTX to the transmitter, downloading and copying the SD card contents to the transmitter's micro SD card, safely disconnecting the transmitter and computer, and donating to the project. One of the first things you may want to do is install a micro SD card into your transmitter. This is optional, but if you would like to be able to use features such as the new model setup wizard, or the announcements made by OpenTX, the SD card and the relevant contents is required. The SD card needs to be of the FAT32 format and new SD cards already come correctly formatted. The SD card goes into the Taranis QX7 into the center slot but make sure you turn the micro SD card upside down before inserting it. Insert the card with the transmitter turned off. Once the card is inserted, turn on the transmitter. You will notice that you now get an SD card warning. This is because the transmitter now knows there's an SD card, but that it's missing the contents it requires, or that the contents present may not match the version required for this version of OpenTX. This will be addressed later on in this video. To connect the transmitter to the computer, with the power turned off, pull the horizontal trim tabs towards each other and briefly press the power button. Once the transmitter is turned on, and you see the bootloader screen, plug in the mini USB cable from the computer to the transmitter. Once the transmitter and computer are connected to each other, wait for a few seconds and two drives will appear on the desktop. You may need to wait up to 30 seconds for this to occur. Using the link in the description below, download Companion from the OpenTX website. Companion is available for a number of different operating system platforms. Select the one that you would like to use and download it to your computer. Once Companion is downloaded, install it and then run it. When Companion runs, it always checks for new versions of the firmware. In this case, because this is the first time we are running Companion and we haven't configured the firmware options, do not download the firmware when prompted. To download OpenTX, we first need to create a radio profile. This radio profile determines which transmitter we are using. Based on the transmitter hardware we are using and the options we select on this screen, the firmware is compiled and downloaded for us. Select the desired radio type from the radio type drop-down menu. In this case, we are going to be working with the Tyrannus QX7. Once you have done that, select the language you want to use for your transmitter. 
After that, you need to select a number of build options. The details of this are provided in the documentation in the link below. I've selected a few here that I like to use. For example, I like to be able to see the microseconds of the output pulses from the transmitter that go to the servo. The SD structure path and the backup folder path are locations on your computer where you're going to store the SD card contents and make backups of your radio too. More details of this will be discussed in a future video. Select the default stick mode, which is either mode 1 or mode 2 for most people, and select the default channel order. It is my recommendation that you also select the append version number to the firmware file name, and you also select offer to write the firmware to the transmitter after download. The application settings tab is for settings related to companion and don't affect the OpenTX firmware. This tab is optional for now. However, I like to set the location of the automatic backups folder. This is where, if you want, every time you write the firmware to your radio, an automatic backup is made and stored at this location. The simulator settings tab is related to the simulator that comes along with companion. The simulator allows you to simulate how your models will behave on OpenTX on the radio. More details about the simulator will be discussed in a future video. You can skip the settings on this tab for now. The simulator capture folder is where when using a simulator, if you take an LCD screenshot, the files are, from this screenshot are placed. Before writing a new firmware to your radio, it is my recommendation that you back up the radio. While Companion has a built-in automatic backup feature when you write firmware to the radio, it is my opinion that it is always a good idea to explicitly make a backup yourself. This backup includes the firmware that is currently loaded on your radio as well as the models and their settings. In the future, if you need to roll back the firmware update on your radio, this backup will become handy. Now we are ready to download OpenTX. The OpenTX firmware is compiled on the servers when you hit the download button. The compile uses options that you configured in the radio profile tab. It could take a few seconds to up to a few minutes for you to receive your OpenTX firmware file. Once the OpenTX firmware is downloaded, Companion will prompt you to write the firmware to your radio. Make sure that the Check Hardware Compatibility checkbox is selected and then write the firmware to the radio. Writing the firmware to the radio takes a few seconds. It doesn't take very long. It is recommended that you download the SD card contents from within Companion. These contents, as mentioned earlier, are useful for features such as the model wizard and audio announcements. Once the SD card 
zip file is downloaded, unzip it and look at its contents. The sounds folder contains announcement files for a number of different languages. It is my suggestion that you delete the language files that you won't be using. Copy all these files and folders to the transmitter's SD card. Make sure that the file opentx.sdcard.version is in the root or top level folder of the SD card. When transferring files to and from the SD card, if you wish, you could also just eject the SD card from the transmitter and use an SD card reader. This method has much higher transfer rates for the files. Once the file copying is complete, make sure you eject both the transmitter drives that were mounted on your computer. Disconnect the USB cable from the transmitter and turn it off. Turn on and enjoy the new firmware on your transmitter. Welcome to OpenTX. Bienvenue sur OpenTX. OpenTX is brought to you for free. However, it has taken thousands of hours of programming and hundreds and hundreds of dollars in purchases of equipment to be able to bring you this outstanding firmware and companion software. Please donate to the developers so that they can keep this project alive and keep improving and bringing you this awesome system. To support this channel, please like, subscribe and follow the links below.